This video, we're going to be dropping our New York Jets kind of offensive mini ebook here. Super simple version of the offense, but really effective version. If you want to get my full version of this offensive ebook, it is available on my school.com website, school.com slash Cody Ballard. Link is going to be in the description. We actually moved over to school from Patreon this summer. The reason why is it's just a lot more user friendly for you guys to be able to navigate, be able to get your questions answered faster, and be able to get access to your ebooks a little bit smoother and crisper so if you want to get access to the school page it has all of our offensive and defensive ebooks for madden it is also going to be the same platform that we're going to be dropping all of our offensive and defensive ebooks for ncaa 14 so if you're not a school.com uh, community member yet i'd really encourage you to check it out the link's going to be down in the description and it's only ten dollars to sign up and for the first 500 people that sign up we're going to be actually giving you a free film room that is going to that that you can actually have customized to yourself where you can kind of see you know what you need to do to become a better Madden player so again if you want to sign up for that page links gonna be down below so I wanted to drop a little kind of mini mini ebook here for Jets um, just to kind of show you some some cool stuff we do out of the playbook again the full version is on the school page but I did want to cover the audibles real quick for the scheme so if I was play this will beat 99.9% .9 .9 of Mudhead head players and CFM players and regs players. So what you're going to do is you're going to go into your audibles, trip side in. We're going to set the um, the first audible we're going to set is the X under. Second audible is going to be RPO alert wide receiver screen. Then we're going to go over to bunch. We're going to set smash return. And then we're going to set deep corner. We're going to go to bunch strong. We're going to set dagger. We're going to go to bunch tight end. We're going to set curl flat corner and RPO bubble. Tight offset. We're going to set Y out. The play we come out in every, pretty much every single t time is going to be this corner strike out of Bunch Strong. This is my favorite play in the entire game. So the first setup that we're going to show you is kind of your basic double corner. This is really good. It's going to work against pretty much every single coverage in the game. So you're going to slot apprentice corner, the slot receiver, streak the tight end, block the running back if you think there's pressure, and you're going to drag your, your solo wide receiver. So your main read on this play, your first read is actually you are going to peak this drag. If it's available, throw it. But if not, you're going to work your double corner. And against cover four or cover three, the short corner is going to be open. Now, one quick tip I did want to give you here is notice that I'm running this formation with my bunch uh, with my bunch set to the wide side of the field. So you always want to have your bunch to the wide side of the field unless we otherwise say. And you'll see here, this is what's going to really make this double corner wide open against both cover three and cover four. So what a lot of people do is when they're trying to stop this, they're going to kind of be searching around for the defense. So one of the other defenses that you'll see is a standard cover two with a cloud flat pressed up. A pressed up cloud flat is really never going to be able to guard this deep corner route. So you're just going to pass lead this upfield. And as you see, oftentimes this is going to be able to manipulate that defense. So Literally every zone and every zone coverage in the game with a couple of exceptions, and I'll show you the two, is going to be available. Just uh, you're going to be able to beat that. OK, now the next coverage I want to go over real quick is a double flat. So if you do get a double flat or double Mabel coverage, I wanted to just quickly point out what's going to happen here. So there are two versions of double flat that are popular right now. The first one is. Uh, this kind of press dollar, and then we're going to individually back off these outside clouds. This is the best coverage. Uh, this is the best version from a coverage perspective. When you run this with the wide side of the field, in regs, in practice mode, this corner route does not oftentimes, as you see, it does not clear that 30-yard cloud in, in practice mode. In game mode, I'm going to tell you, especially in mutt, because the receivers are a little bit faster, they're going to run the routes a little bit differently, this corner, this short or this deep corner route that you hot routed, it's going to get over the top of the 30 yard cloud. OK, it, it just is. And um, yeah, you're going to have to trust me. You can watch my game plays on this. But this corner route, you just wait on it and he'll eventually get over the top of that. He's not able to do that in practice mode. OK, but he is going to be able to do that in game mode. In practice mode, the other thing I wanted to say is what a lot of people are doing is they're running this kind of baseline dollar where both safeties come down and they don't back off these outside corners. If they don't back off these outside corners, this is guaranteed to be open, okay? And I'll show you that real quick here. So here I didn't really back him off, right? He's just going to stay at his default depth. That's more what you're going to see in games. Yeah, he just kind of barely gets over the top. 
and you throw it on the sideline. It's a big, big, big play against this coverage defense. So that is, and this will also be true of, of 6-1 if they want to run double flat from 6-1, okay? So that's what normally happens. So the best coverage that I have seen for this play is cover three cloud. And so the way that most people are going to run their cover three cloud is they're going to be baseline and pressed, and they're going to have this outside third up top, as you see. So this is where I like to give two suggestions. So this is the number one defense you're going to see. Um, if they know what they're doing, this is the defense you're going to get because that cloud will guard the short corner and that deep – uh, and that deep third zone will guard the deeper corner, okay? So you have a couple of choices in terms of how you want to kind of attack that defense. The first one that I would recommend is understanding that they are oftentimes going to be in a defense like this, and at best case scenario, you're going to get a vert hook from that slot corner. So if they are doing that adjustment, all we have to do is put our running back on a table route to the right. And what you will see here is we are going to high low that flat defender. And we're just going to make it super easy on our offense to be able to continue to move the ball with ease. Another way that you can do the same basic thing, the same basic manipulation, is you're going to call corner strike and just streak the slot receiver. And you're going to snap the ball. So what's going to happen when you do this, it's a quick snap play. It's still a really good play. And what you'll see here is the tight end flat will be available to you to the sideline. The other thing that you can do is you can use kind of a slot apprentice corner on that outside player to try to manipulate that outside third. This does not always work, but often you see, I can kind of ag in front of it. There's, there's some of that now. Not the best method, in my opinion. I think the easiest thing is just to streak this slot receiver against cover three cloud, and then you're just going to throw this tight end. And you see how that's going to be like a – it's almost like a 10-yard slant out in terms of how it's practically going to work. So what are they going to have to do when you start to mix in these two methods of being able to attack this coverage? They are going to ultimately get, in, get themselves into a defense that basically has to look like this where they have a hard flat and they have a cloud flat, and their user is the only person that can be in the middle of the field on the right. This is why Durham is the ultimate counterplay for the scheme. We're going to post the slot, streak the running back, and drag the tight end. So you'll see here, Circle is going to pull both these guys out, and because there's no yellow zone, the running back is going to be wide open up in the alley of the play. Okay, Super, super important uh, route in this offense that you need to understand how to master. So now, let's just kind of think through this. So if I'm the user and I'm playing defense on you, okay, and I see that you're throwing that, what's my first thing that I'm going to probably try to do? I am going to go I'm going to go guard the running back myself, right? And as you can see here in a drop eight coverage scenario, which most people aren't even going to be in a drop eight, they'll probably send four and they'll probably send that middle linebacker in the middle of the field. If they are in that defense, then what you see here is that this post becomes wide open over here because they can't put, they can't get enough depth to be able to defend this. Now, one thing that I have started to see that I do think is worth mentioning as a potential adjustment that people will use is a 20 to 25 yard curl flat zone. And we'll go ahead and base align this because that's what most people do anyway. And what you'll see here, this is this is an interesting adjustment, but it's kind of it's it's kind of effective. So, I've, of course, I forgot to put cover three cloud in here, but we'll just show another cover two. So, so in general, what you got here is you got the hard flat, you got the cloud, right? And then over here, you got a curl flat. So what this is going to do, and the whole idea here, is that this curl flat will kind of bait the post route. So he'll look like he's going to guard the tight end, but then he'll kind of end up at the post. So you'll see he'll just keep going back, 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 back. Obviously, you want to check down to that tight end in that situation, but – you do have to look over there and actually make that high-low read on that curl flat defender. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to, to make the proper read. Another thing that I've noticed a lot of people liking to do with the 30-yard purples is this adjustment right here. So they'll back this curl flat off, or they'll even back this guy off and shade and basically create a, a cloud flat. And then you know they could do a variety of different things over here uh, kind of on this backside. But generally, this is what you get. 
So back to the verticals, re back to the reason we're using verticals uh, or Durham here is because we have this snap throw wheel to circle. So if they don't play hard flats, we can just throw that snap throw wheel to circle. So we're gonna force hard flats to that, that bunch side. And if we force a hard flat, then they can't really guard us in, in, in any other way. Now, as I said before, um, you know, one of the best things or one of the most common things that I see people do uh, when they're when they're doing this, and this is where I will occasionally come out in the play flood is to kind of combat uh, to kind of combat, you know, the main ways that people guard the, the main the main coverage for uh, corner strike. So if I come out in the play flood and we'll come out and cover three and I accidentally flipped it. So we'll flip it back. There we go. OK. So again, here we're gonna double flat to the right side and I have that third zone. So what I have here with this play that's really unique is I have this deep fade. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slot apprentice corner to the slot receiver and I'm gonna tight in apprentice corner the tight end. So we're just inverting who's on what route. What this is gonna do a really good job of though is because you have that deep fade route, you can throw that corner route. The reason why is because that deep fade route to the circle receiver is going to influence he's going to influence the deep uh safety so you'll see here see how see how a third doesn't really guard it and then if they play cover three over there i can just throw that tight end short corner every single time against any kind of press zone but again i, I really want to highlight this how this does against cover three cloud so if you're getting cover three cloud you see how that deep third he's not really going to play it and then you can just throw this to the sideline wide open Really, really, really good route to use. If you want to, um, another thing that I do think is important to mention here, if you want to, another adjustment could just be to call this play stock. Uh, this tight end corner, it can be thrown against this. It's a little tighter, as you can see. And it's just because of how the route, how the route works and how the route w runs. If you are able to roll out, this will be a little easier for you but just freeform it down and to the outside to try to get it away from that safety. And as you see, it's very effective for attacking kind of that cover three cloud type of defense, right? I love this R1 on the corner route, you know, and then the tight end. You could put the tight end on a flat if you wanted to uh, so that we still have a flat threat. You could do this version of it as well, right? These are some different variations, but they all kind of do the same thing in the essence, which is, we're gonna throw that deep corner to the wide side of the field. Super, super good. Another thing that I wanted to mention about flood that is I do think really important is if you're getting a lot of that 30 and five and they're actually backing them off. So let's say you're getting a lot of cover two, but they're backing them off, right? So you're getting a lot of this coverage. This, this, this play is really good. There's two things you can do. Number one, you could flip the play and streak the tight end, and you're going to quick snap this as fast as possible. What's going to happen is because we, go, we flip to the short side, this fade route on the left side is going to be able to be thrown and caught against cover two for a one-play score. So that's one method that you can use that, that really does a good job of manipulating that double Mabel, double flat defense. The other method that you can use here is we're going to try to take advantage of this tight end. Now, as far as what, we, what do we run R1 on, it's kind of up to you. But this tight end corner runs super deep, and it will get over the top of that 30, as you see right there up on the side. Got to wait just a little bit longer there. We'll show that again. And, um, yeah, the biggest thing here. You just need time for this play, obviously. But this, this tight end corner can, can certainly just run over the top of a 30-yard cloud, and then you throw it, like, on the sideline. So that's a, that's a method as well. Another thing you can do, and I, I did want to get into this a little bit, another adjustment that I see, again, these are kind of important to, to highlight this for you guys. I'm showing how we're basically going to call our, our offensive plays once they start adjusting to our power play. That's super important because we wanna make them adjust to the power play. Another adjustment that I see a lot of people do that's actually pretty good is they'll man up circle and they'll like shade outside. What this is gonna, it's gonna do two things for you. Number one, it's gonna stop this, this short corner. So you'll see here, this short corner, it's, it's, it's a tighter throw as you see, I mean, it's not super open. 
So that's one method that they can do. Uh, and the other thing that I find with the press man, I find this to be the most difficult. Actually, I think Gabigol did this against me in one of the games that I randomly matched up with him in. And I found this to be probably the most difficult adjustment for this offense. So it, it's going to mess up the timing because you can't throw verticals. You can't throw Durham, right? He's going to play it. So you see here, I can't just throw this. So I can't throw Durham, uh, the quick throw out of Durham. I can't throw the corner strike corner. The other thing that I find that this does a really good job of is any kind of clear out that I run to circle because he's going to press him because oftentimes they shade underneath. So if I streak, like if I did a streak corner, whoops, a streak corner flat, this would not clear out that quarter, as you see, and the quarter would be able to play the tight end. Because of the jam and the reroute, it makes it it makes it a um, a tougher tougher throw. So, what do we do to get around that? What I like to do to get around that is utilize a tight or a uh, running back wheel route as kind of the pull route here. And essentially, what we're going to do is we're going to wheel route the running back. We're going to streak the R one receiver. Uh, I'm sorry, we're going to streak the tight end, and we're going to corner route that slot receiver still. What this is going to do, and then you can just drag this guy. So what this is going to do now is this running back streak will pull that quarter, and you can throw this on the sideline. Okay, that's an option that you have. Um, another thing that I think is pretty decent here is using, using the, um, the rollout. So if you want to roll out, this will also be able to get this more open on the sideline, okay? So those are two methods in which you can still kind of attack that right side, even when they try to neutralize it with the man up. Another thing that I really want to mention here is if they're manning this guy up, oftentimes there's a couple choices. So the first choice they would make would be this, and this is where I love this next setup I'm going to show you. So this next, this next uh, setup that I like to do is really good for cover two. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to wide trail. And then we're going to streak our tight end. And we're going to flat our outside receiver. And then from there, you can just take your running back and put him on a Texas pattern or an in route. Something simple, something over the middle. What happens here is against cover two, you see how that cloud's going to go to the flat. And then we're going to be able to throw this over the top. So this is a great thing to do if you're getting a lot of pressure out of a cover two shell or anything like that. Another thing that this does, again, this is anticipating that they do this. Let's say they do this adjustment, we're not really ready for it, but they run this defense against that. Well, if they run this defense against that, they would probably have to user this defender. So this is another thing, like if they're usering here, they kind of have to put that guy in a cloud flat. If they don't, then that means they're probably gonna user over here, right? So the reason that that's significant for what we're trying to do here is when you go to wide trail and you put the running back on a Texas pattern, we can throw this Texas pattern right in that pocket right there. So where does the user have to go? The user has to come down on the Texas route. We'll show that. So the user has to kind of come down on the Texas route. And then again, this is assuming that they're in some type of cover three. So they might have, you know, something like this with the hard flat over there to the right side. Again, they're probably going to be using here, and this guy's probably going to be in a flat. So they're going to have to kind of basically be like a right side hook curl. So they're going to have to kind of stay down on the running back. Well, with the tight end streak, it's going to clear out this third. And so what you'll be able to do is you can throw this post underneath it, aggressive catch it, and it makes it one of the most important routes in the entire offense. So occasionally what will happen at the, and I think this is a good time in the video to mention it, is they'll just start blitzing you. So the best methods to pick up the blitz from Dollar, or at least the main ones that we see, is going to be this pass protection method. So we're going to set up kind of the, the standard Dollar with the backed off slot corner. We're going to send five here. So it's a really good blitz, and this is a coverage shell you will see. So what you want to do to block this is you want to block your running back. You want to slide protect to the right. And then normally this is enough to pick it up. But if you do need to ID somebody, you just want to ID what I find. I find IDing the left side corner to be the most versatile uh, way to block pretty much every dollar blitz. So this includes DB fires. So 
slide right, block running back, ID, left side slot corner. See how the running back is going to go to the left. And then you have uh, plenty of time, you know, to be able to throw the ball away or roll out or whatever. Okay. So uh, let's, let's cover DB fire too. So, and you can basically get the same idea out of spinner. So, you know, I'm going to be using down in here. So same pass protection. DB fire two is probably the one that is probably best if you are running this protection method, but generally this, as you see, picks it up and then the sheds and practice mode are a little bit more powerful than the game, but in general, you will have time to, you'll have time to throw. And then the last one I, I forgot to show is this right here. So again, just ID the slot. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. So the safety comes down like this, and then they, they basically QB contain, right? So we're doing the same thing. Running back goes to the left side, and you see we're able to pick this up, and then we're able to throw our corner route to the right. Super, super efficient, effective pickups for dollar. If you're playing 6-1, I find 6-1 to be much, much more difficult to block in this formation. So we'll kind of cover that too real quick. The same pretty much thing applies to 335 odd, but you're going to ID the, the A gap blitzer out of 335 odd. So, you know, if they're, whoops, if they are um, sending the six man pressure, if you do that same method that I just told you, so slide right, block running back, ID the blitzer on the left, this is probably still the best method to pick up. As you see right there, it actually did pick it up. To prevent the B gaps and the random, like, random stuff like that. What I've found that works best is to just block your tight end and call it good. And, and I find that to be one of the best methods for blocking the, um, like the, like the disengages, you know, so like if they're going something like a six man, just block your tight end. And then I would have like a route combo like this is pretty effective, something like this. And, and you see here, you know, able to kind of pick it up and then we got to go out we got to get out of the ball, get rid of the ball. Obviously they're sending six. So, it's a good blitz regardless, but that's kind of my pickup, my pass protection method. Okay, so uh, the next thing that I wanted to do at this point is I wanted to go over kind of some ways to manipulate what I see the most, what, what most people do against me. So the first thing that people do against me that's pretty popular is they will basically sit in double Mabel, okay? If they're gonna sit in double flat, double Mabel, and you want to attack it, and you don't want it to be risky, and you want it to be a surefire thing, audible over to the play triple out out of bunch tight end. And what you're going to do is you're going to smart route circle, streak the slot, corner, the left side guy. And then on the back end of this, you can block your tight end in Texas, your running back, in route your running back. You can drag in Texas, kind of whatever you want to do. But the main thing here is if they run double flat to stop that corner to the, that shorter corner, this is a touchdown over the top, or at least a huge play against the defense. So that's one of my favorite setups for, for that. Now, let's say they kind of bluff it, you know, so like they, they show double Mabel, but in reality, it's not going to be double Mabel. So like this would be a great example. And, and I think Astro and John Beast do this a lot of the 6-1, but they're showing double Mabel, but it's not really going to be double Mabel. You're able to throw this short corner really easily, Okay. So that's one of my one of my favorite things to do when I'm getting a lot of double double flat double Mabel coverage. Another play that I think is really important to run is dagger, and the reason why dagger is an important play is so that they cannot get comfortable just sitting over here in the right side seam. We want them to have to take the crosser. So in this example, what you're going to see here is number one, you can set up your slide right, your block left protection. And then what you're going to do is you're going to look for this crosser on the sideline. As you saw, he was kind of coming open on the sideline at that point. So what that's going to force your opponent to have to do is your opponent is now going to have to put a deep flat on that side. Most of the time, they're going to try to do this from the safety position. So it might look something like, like this right here. And if they do that, you actually can kind of throw this you can throw this tight end route late, but you're basically forcing them to have to have two flats on the left. It's okay to throw the ball away. It's okay to waste a play. That's perfectly fine. 
but you want to force them to have to defend the solo side just as much as they have to defend the bunch side. The other thing that I see a lot of people do, especially to me, is they will blitz, they will blitz me. So if you're getting blitzed a lot, the easiest thing, the easiest thing to do to beat the blitz, guys, if you think about it, so like what's a coverage? What's a blitz coverage? Typically, um, typically from what I've seen, a blitzing coverage is going to be something that looks like what you're about to see on your screen here. So they're going to have two flats and this guy probably a purple, I think. But basically this. Okay. So what does a really good job against this? What does a really good job against this is Durham, of course, but also the RPO because you have two people out there blocking. It's two on two. Oftentimes, you're going to be able to get that RPO and be able to just throw that against most blitzes. Another thing that I see a lot of people do is they don't really want to defend the right side flat. So I think it's very important in this offense to really highlight this. So they really don't want to defend this right side flat. So what we would do is like it'd be like a ver hook. So if they don't want to defend that right side flat, we have to force them to have to defend that. So one of my favorite and most underrated route combos is to call corner strike. I'm gonna I'm gonna re flat the tight end and streak this guy. And this is a really um, it's a really basic route combo, but it's gonna do a really good job because this when you re flat that tight end, it's gonna get a little bit better separation. Okay, so that's one method that I like to do, especially if they're doing a lot of manning up at the circle receiver. Uh, I want to still force. I want to get to the flat on the right side multiple ways. I don't want to just the if you're if you're not careful, the only time you'll attack the flat is through using the play Durham, and you want to attack the flat through the use of other players, so that, um, s s just so that you're going to be able to. They're not going to be able to key in on one person. Okay. Last thing that I think is important to talk about that I see a lot is uh, man to man. So we haven't touched really at all about how to beat man coverage. And that's because it's not hard to beat man, but you need to know what to do. So if you want to beat man coverage, all you have to do here is you're going to go to the play Y trail. You're going to wheel your running back. And then you're going, that's basically it. Just call this play. Um, this will beat man coverage pretty much every single time somebody's going to get open. Oftentimes the running back will get open or the tight end will get open as you see. And so if you think about this from a user perspective, who are they going to use her? They're probably going to use her, the tight end. So we'll illustrate that by putting this guy in a hook curl. And what that's going to do, and if you have a slot apprentice, whoops, I messed up, I was in the wrong play. If you have a slot apprentice or hot rod master, you can put the outside guy on the corner. I do think that's a little better for beating man. But basically what's going to happen is oftentimes either your drag is going to be wide open across the middle or your corner, and I threw it way late, but your corner is going to be open on the cut. And I'll show you the corner. This is specifically against cover one, and then I'll talk about cover two as well. So cover two is much easier to beat over the top than cover one is. Cover one is a better man coverage for this specific formation. But basically what's going to happen is this corner should get wide open on the outside. So you see here. He'll kind of he'll kind of beat that again. If everything breaks down, your drag and your tight end are going to be available. Most of the time, from my experience, I have seen this corner on the left side be pretty reliable. Now, there's another method in which we can attack that right sideline, which I'm going to show you in a minute. If you know they're not playing cover two man, um, but basically you can free form high ball up. A lot of times he'll catch it, and a lot of times there'll be a one on one and a touchdown. So if they're not putting safety helps on the outside, it's a great way to do it. If they are putting safety helps on the outside, the way, when what that would mean is they're going to put deep halves. So we're going to do two deep halves, and we're going to shade underneath. If they're doing these adjustments against you out of a cover two man type of defense, everything is going to be open now. Uh, and the reason why is just because it's, this play is really set up to beat this coverage. So what you'll see here uh, is – Number one, this post, it should be open. Of course, I said everything's going to be open, and we got random bumps. That's what, the only reason why man coverage is good is because of the random bumping. If you can free up and you can get clean releases, it will make it makes it so much harder to play man. Again, we're assuming in the defense what they're probably doing is they're probably going to go ahead and try to take away the tight end route because that's the most consistent route. 
the running back route, and then this post route right here. So Rasheed Rice is kind of selling me on his route running, but most of the time that post route will be open for uh, a huge game against man if they have kind of a double flat. And then the running back wheel also a lot of times will be open to the to the left side because you'll get this kind of random bump, and we'll show that here. So see how you got to got that random bump there, and then I'm able to throw this over the top. And that's the thing with cover two man is like you just need one time to burn them, and they're going to get out of it. Another way that I like to beat man coverage that's a little simpler is I audible over to P.A. bit over, tied in a printed post, and then zig this guy. Uh, this is a real simple, uh, real simple man beater, and we're just going to basically take our little zig. The zig route is going to win the majority of the time, and then if the if the zig route does not win for whatever reason, then what you're going to be able to do is you're going to be able to throw your tight end route. One thing I've started doing in Madden 24 is using a drag zig combo. I do like that as well, but in general, the tight end post is the main route that consistently delivers against that man-to-man -man coverage. The next route combo at a wide trail is we're going to drag the slot. We're going to um, flat the outside bunch receiver. And this is a cover one robber specialty. So what this combo is going to do is it's going to isolate this running back in man-to-man -man coverage. And it's going to take advantage of the fact they don't have safety help on the right side. And what you'll see is once the running back kind of cuts up field, he's going to get a step over the top of that defender. And oftentimes it's going to be a huge play over the top. If they're running cover to man, I do want to address that. So let's say that they are, like you guess wrong, and they're running cover two man. So they do have safety help over there on the right-hand side. Not everything is completely lost. What you're able to do is you'll see the safety kind of widen out, and this is where you're going to want to throw that post route over the middle of the field. You're going to have to throw a little sharper, but oftentimes it's going to be it's still going to be something that you have kind of available to you. So those are really the two main plays that I use against man. Uh, the other underrated play against man is Durham. Durham is really good against man. The reason why is because, number one, this tight end drag is completely unbumpable, and he will win 99.9% .9 of the time. So your tight end drag beats man coverage. The other thing about Durham that's really good against man coverage is the tight end or the, I apologize, the, the slot apprentice post. So the, the slot apprentice post is really good against Durham. You'll see once he cuts into the inside, if I can have a second, he's going to be wide open. So your, your, your slot receiver is going to be open. The other thing that's really good against, against like cover two man or really just man in general is your running back streak. So your running back streak, when he cuts up field, he's actually going to kind of like basically beat him, and you can throw this with an inside, a slight inside pass lead. Oftentimes it's going to be able to get open for a big play against this coverage. So I'll show it to you one more time here, and we'll zone this linebacker. So what you'll see is, again, when the running back cuts up field, see how he's going to kind of get up over him? And then you can possession catch that in front of the KO, and he'll get this little dive down animation that's really effective. So these are some of my favorite methods out of, out of this formation, out of this playbook, uh, to be able to attack, you know, man zone coverage. Obviously, there's all, always staples. You can go to bunch, and you can run uh, smash return. I think this is a great little play that just allows you to attack that left side. Really, the weakness of Bunch Strong is it doesn't attack the left side of the field very quickly, very fastly. One of my favorite things to also do is go to Bunch, and let's say I run like verticals, but I'm going to wheel my running back. I'm going to C route that left side guy, and I'm going to drag this guy underneath. What this is going to do is it's just getting me, again, quick methods in which I can attack that left side. Okay, That's the biggest thing that is, is kind of lacking about Bunch Strong. So much so that I would recommend every now and then go into a five wide look where you go with a streak at a corner strike. And then essentially on the back end of this play, I think it's fine if you just go with a flat and a curl, something really basic. It doesn't have to be complex. Uh, but what this is going to do is it just makes it so that it's harder to sit on everything is, you know, everything's going uh, to the right side. And of course, you have dagger as well. Dagger is really good. Dagger is really good. Um, this circle receiver oftentimes will be a great man beater for you in the play dagger. So as long as you have your pass protection down, this offense is, is really, really, really effective. One other little mini kind of tip that I would give you is if you're ever playing 4-3 even 6-1, this is a great adjustment or great little tactic. So if you're ever playing 4-3 even 6-1 and they're trying to blitz you, come out with your bunch to the short side 
You're going to audible over to trips tight end offset, and you're going to run this screen right here. This screen is super hard to defend, uh, and the reason why from 6-1 is because they are very compressed. This screen almost always will give someone that runs 6-1, even the best players, a ton of problems, a ton of challenges. Mixing this in with the short side RPO alert bubble quick snap is really, really effective. Now, I want to show you kind of a very underrated way to score inside the five in this playbook that I'm actually shocked that people don't utilize more. So my favorite audibles for inside the five or favorite plays for the inside the five is the single back tight Y off flex. We're going to utilize the jet sweep, the zero one trap, the under Z curl, and then the wide zone. In the bunch tight end, we're going to utilize the play power alert bubble, and then everything else is going to stay the same. The cool part about this is you can audible to this from the play or from your formation. So what I like to do is if I'm playing six one, a lot of times I'll come down here and I'll try a jet sweep just to see if they can stop it. So the jet sweep, you're just going to jurtle as soon as you get the ball. And oftentimes, as you see right there, your momentum is going to be able to carry you in into the end zone. The other really cool part about this, this uh, jet sweep that I think people that kind of sleep on is you can flip this as well. So what I can do with this formation is if I flip this, you'll see here, now we're able to attack this left side. I think that's fine too. Every now and then you'll see here with 6-1, sometimes they'll shift their line a certain way and it could mess up their, their shifting. Another thing that I like about, or, or I like in terms of defending, or I'm sorry, attacking 6-1 is really this right here. And if they're leaving their D-line spread out, 0-1 trap is a really good run for a yard or two. Almost always, you'll be able to slam it up the middle of the field, and oftentimes, you'll be able to get a touchdown with that one little adjustment. Again, it's very simple. It might seem like a lot, but it really isn't. And they're going to be standing kind of right here. We go jet sweet or 0-1 um, trap, and as you see, if they hold their blocks, it's a touchdown every single time. The last play that I like down here, that I think is really, I, I still really do also, I really like this RPO screen. I really do. It, they just, I find people really struggle to defend this. And if they go out there like that, then you can just run right up the middle of the field. So I find that trip side in is a really good uh, play, a really good formation to audible to. Another really underrated play inside the five that we haven't talked about yet in a run in general in this playbook that's really good is tight offset tight end. It's the inside zone, and we're just going to motion snap this guy, and then we're going to juke inside instantly. Those are all really good methods for kind of getting some cheap touchdowns inside the five. And then the last play that I like to really utilize down here, obviously the standard passing all applies, but it's this power fake bubble. What you're going to do is as soon as the ball is snapped, you're going to throw this out here. You're going to try to juke inside and score. It's a very effective little quick play that can get you in the end zone. And that's pretty much it. That's, these, this is kind of like the main stuff that I like to do out of the Jets offensive, uh, out of the Jets offensive ebook. I think this is really, really effective. If you want to get my entire uh, New York Jets offensive ebook completely revamped and revitalized, head over to the school.com page. That link is going to be down in the description below. For just $10, you can become a member over there and you'll get access to everything. You'll get access to all of my offensive, defensive ebooks, all of my updates to those ebooks, anything new that we drop, uh, as well as all of our college football content. So this has kind of been a little bit of a simplified version of the Jets, but I think this will be the majority of players that you play online, especially if you can kind of master some of those little red zone plays that I talked about at the end.